For many years, the astronomers, they have been warning that stars and planets that were clearly visible 10 to 20 years ago can no longer be seen. Look at the starlit sky here. This is how it actually looks. The starlit sky is no longer visible in our cities due to the fact that the lighting intensity is continuously increasing. This is not only a problem for astronomers, but for all of us. Since our children, they are losing their contact with the greater universe. And the reason is simple. Light pollution. Streets and squares and parks and buildings, they are more and more lit up. More and more light is added in our cities without anyone looking at the whole picture. The problem is that a large part of the light has no purpose. It's directed directly into the, into the air, blinding us. Our ability to see in the dark is hindered by all the light. This creates unsafe and unpleasant cities. One single glaring light source can completely blind the eye, and it can take 30 minutes for us to adapt to darkness. Many places would be more safe and seem more beautiful if most of the light were taken away. During the night, our eyes are made for moonlight. We see movement, but not colors. The cold light experiences as, co as brighter than the warm. The modern city never sleeps, and it's pulsating 24 to 7. There are no, now six billion people on Earth. Year 2050, we will probably be 10 billion. And this is Tokyo. Tokyo looks like any other huge city in the world, except the fact that this city never ends. Street with traffic runs through the city. Office building, they are lit up 24 hours a day. And the commercial lights, they are very intrusive. And when you come down to street level, you're instantly blinded by light. High and low, and with different color temperatures. The blinding effect affects our night vision and makes us more and more dependent on the artificial light to see anything. Also, the light sources are often above us. In a few minutes, you will see how it looks like when the light comes from the side. In this particular shop, there is more than 100 fluorescent lamps in the ceiling. Why? The white light with no shadows stresses the customer. When you exit the shop, you can't see anything. This man has only one lamp in his shop, and here you can see much better. This way of lighting protects your night vision. And if you want to lower the energy consumption on Earth, you should let him keep his bulb and instead have a serious talk with a man who owns the shop with a fluorescent lamp. And I know that the, the light bulb produces 95% heat. Um, and of course, we should use more energy-saving um, light sources. Also, reducing the number of light sources would also have a huge effect on energy reduction. This is a city, Jo, in Sweden. 
This is how cities were lit up in the old days. Lanterns fixed on the facade, often placed uh, far apart. And the darkness was a natural part of the city. But 100 years ago, you didn't have to compete with, with light from traffic and commercials, commercial light from shops and signs. Last summer, I met the father of a friend in Poland, and actually I have met him many times before, but this evening in this small dark restaurant, in the light of one single lamp, I, I saw him for the first time. And this is a fantastic experience showing how important shadows is to create uh, strong impressions. Darkness has, just like silence, become unusual. I took this picture earlier this year at the Art Biennale in Venice. Unfortunately, I don't remember the name of the artist, but when I entered the room, it was completely dark. After a few minutes, the structures became visible as abstract lines of sunshine. And these are the light sources that we have lived with for hundreds and thousands of years, and the electric light has only existed for maybe 100 years. When you ask people to describe powerful light experiences that they have had during their lives, most people describe the natural light. So the question is, how can we use the artificial light to make um, make us calm and safe, and still man maintain our night vision. And actually, there is an example in Tokyo. In one part of the city, they have begun all over again. They have taken away all the light and started with darkness. Low-intensity lights have been placed only where needed, and there is no glare. Lighting poles have been placed along the streets, but in open places, the sky is allowed to be the ceiling. Despite the low levels, you can feel safe and secure. The light is well-defined, and it's easy to fa find your way around. And here you see the effect when the light comes from the side. The light is orientated to the facades and to the streets. No glare occurs anywhere. Crossings are lit with a cold light for maximum orientation. Thanks to the, the facades around this little park, almost no lighting is necessary in the park itself. The water reflects the light in the surroundings and there is a low light at the ground level along the small path, and also the cherry trees has uh, a soft light. The visit to in the part of the city with so little light has reinforced my opinion that much light does not automatically create safety. It's more important that the light is well-defined that it provides clear orientation and is of low intensity so that we can see. Lowering the light intensity in cities would reduce energy consumption, improve the environment and create more beautiful cities. And the technology exists. New energy efficient light sources exist and are constantly being improved and LED is a good example. And as an architect and lighting designer, I look forward to do my part so that my children can see the starlit sky in the future. Thank you.